Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Now, we are talking about entering God's rest. Praise God. And I, and I shared something so important yesterday. And um, we're going to continue um, from where we stopped yesterday. But before going to today's broadcast, are you ready to comfort your daily bread? I'm ready. Praise God. So let's release our faith together in agreement. Are you ready? Join me right now and say with me, say, Father, I demand right now for my daily bread. And I receive today's portion in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Everything I require today, I call it forth now. And I receive it in Jesus' name. Amen. Man, praise God. Now, when we say these things, expect a miracle to happen today. How is it going to happen? I don't know. Praise God. But one thing I can tell you, God, who is the author of all things, will manifest meeting your needs today. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise God. All right, let's go to Hebrews chapter 4. We, we, we entered the scripture last week and we're going to kick off from here today. From verse 1, Hebrews chapter 4, I want you to take note of these words. Say, therefore, since a promise remains, take note of that, since a promise remains of entering his rest. So now there is a promise about entering his rest. That's God's rest now. And he says, the promise remains. What does it mean the promise remains? It means there is still an opportunity. Now, either there is still space for you or it has not been taken yet. So maybe there are multiple spaces. I'm speaking English now. Maybe there are multiple spaces. So some have been taken, but there's still space for you. Or it is one space, but and it has still not been taken. So now that's why it says, since a promise remains of entering his rest. There is a promise of entering his rest and that promise still exists. It says, let us fear, lest any of you seem to have come short of it. It says, take heed. Take heed. Lest you have come short of entering that rest. Now, I was telling you yesterday that it's amazing how we get or we have made ourselves to be stuck with revelations, knowledge of wonderful people who walk this earth. If though from the ones we read about in the Bible and the ones who lived not so long ago. But we have been stuck with their revelation. We have been stuck with their knowledge. And they may have entered into some measure of rest. You know, like, like um, um, Hebrews. Let, let's go to Hebrews 11. Take no hold on with this now in your mind. Let's, let me show you something in Hebrews chapter 11. Now, you know Hebrews 11 is what we call the Fitz Hall of Fame. Hebrews 11. Now, he began to list things many people did. Now, he now said in verse 13, I want you to follow this carefully. He said, these all died in faith. Hebrews 11 verse 13. These all died in faith, not having received the promises. Hmm? There were promises. But he says, these men that did many mighty works, they died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, we are assured of them, embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. What did they see? He said they saw it afar off. They were assured of them, they embraced them, and confessed by reason of those promises that they saw, they con their confession was, look, we are strangers on this earth. 
What do they mean we are strangers on, on this earth? We are not supposed to be bound by the laws and activities of this earth. That's what they were meant by we're strangers on this earth. You see that now? Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. See, as I said this thing now, I, the anointing just came on me. You know, there, there is the anointing that comes on you with, that brings knowledge. And when that anointing comes on you, your, your, your mind opens up because the transformation is out. Now, that is the main transformation that the Holy Spirit does in our lives as individuals. Apart from that, any other thing he does is for us to use for the outside. You see that now? So, an anointing can come on me now and I start ministering to you. But then, now, that's, that's, that's sweet. But that's not the greatest thing the Holy Spirit does. The greatest thing the Holy Spirit does in our lives is when the anointing opens up your mind. Thank you, Holy Spirit. <laughs> So these men saw these promises afar off. What promise was he referring to? He was referring to the promise of his rest. So these men saw, I told you last week, this rest thing started from the Garden of Eden. So now men haven't labored on the earth, haven't gotten used to laboring on the earth. God is now telling them that there is a life that I planned for because all his plan must be fulfilled. That's what Jesus said. So they began to realize that there is another life. There is something greater than what we are struggling to do. There is something greater than this thing we are doing today. There is a life that is greater than it. It's so bad, Adam didn't give us good um, um, documentation about what he experienced in that garden. So bad. Now, he says, <laughs> He says, But haven't seen them afar off, we're assured of them, embrace them, and confess that they were strangers and pilgrims on this earth. Now, watch this, verse 14. For those who say such things, that these people now, <laughs> declare plainly that they seek a homeland. Ah, yeah. And truly, if they had called to mind the country from which they had come out, they would have had opportunity to return. But now they desire a better. But now they desire a better, that is a heavenly country. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he had prepared a city for them. Now, Look at verse 39, same Hebrews 11. And all these, having obtained a good testimony through faith, did not receive the promise. God having provided something better for us, that they should not be made perfect apart from us. Now here he lets us know that, look, God was keeping this promise until we come. Right? Until we come. Now, what was he talking about? But notice, he said, this man, look at that verse. Uh, this man died, they all died in faith, but they, they did not receive the promise. They did not manifest the promise, right? So what he's referring to, just like the children of Israel. Now, in the case of, now, here he goes beyond um, the nation of Israel in the wilderness. He goes because he talked about specific people who did great things, people who believed God. And he says, but they all died in faith. They did not receive that. This also includes people that have lived in our days. Are you getting what I'm saying? Now, I call me Shabaya. Let's go back to Hebrews chapter 4. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Mm. Therefore, since a promise remains, see that he goes back to the promise. Now he defines the promise in this place. Therefore, since a promise remains of entering his rest, brothers and sisters, this promise is for everybody. It's for everybody. <laughs> it's not for pastors. It's not for, it's not for preachers. It is for everybody that believes in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
And he now lets us know that there is a promise of entering into his rest and that promise still exists. He says, let us fear lest any of you seem to have come short of it. For indeed the gospel was preached to us as well as to them. But the word which they heard did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in those who heard it. Now, he says, these ones did not enter into the rest, not because the word did not come to them, but the word that came to them had a problem with the way they received it. He said they did not receive it in faith. They heard it, but they did not mix it with faith. Now, what was he talking about? How do you mix what you heard with faith? I'll tell you. Sometimes you hear God's word and you're beginning to rationalize it in your mind. How possible can this be? If, if God does this and does this. Now, when you're doing that rationalizing, you are the knowledge you're applying to it is the knowledge that exists presently. You see that now? Now, when you're doing that, you are analyzing that thing without faith. Now, faith is the ingredients that you put even when God speaks to you. Faith, the level of faith you apply, because now he says the gospel was preached to us as well as it was preached to them. But the problem here is the word which they heard did not profit them. Why didn't it profit them? They did not mix it with faith. Now, here he just lets you know, there is a promise of entering into God's rest. Okay, there's a promise. What is that rest? I told you, the rest is living the life that God has ordained for you to live. Now, when I mean living the life, I mean the specific quality of life. We'll go into those details later. That God has ordained for you and the way he has ordained for you to live it. See that now? Now, let me give you an example. Divine health is rest. You enter it. You don't just wake up and realize, ah, I've not been sick for so long. No, no, no. You deliberately enter. When I mean deliberately, you are led into divine health. You see that now? Divine prosperity is rest. And you enter it. You don't stumble into it. You labor to enter it. See that now? So now, there is a promise of divine health in scriptures. But how many of us have received that word and trying to rationalize it with our mind? I'll give you an example. Now, this one will affect you. There is a promise of immortality in scriptures. Yes, there is. There is. <laughs> now, some, some are already having issues with that. Say, no, 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 no. Maybe you're misunderstanding what, what, what the... No, no, no. There is a promise of immortality. And you, 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 you can't argue that because Jesus, who is the captain of our salvation, the Bible says he's the author and finisher of our faith. He's still alive till this day. That's called immortality. Enoch that we read about is still alive till this day. What do I mean he's still alive till this day? Someone can show up on earth and say, I'm Enoch. That Enoch, yes, that Enoch that you read about in scriptures. <laughs> and it doesn't mean he came from the dead. No, he never died. <laughs> you get Elijah can show up today. I say, hey guys, man, world has advanced. When I, when I was here, man, we're using chariots and, and stuff. So, hey, what are you talking about? I'm Elijah. Elijah? You, you're not going to say Elijah came back from the dead. No, he didn't come from the dead. He's been in heaven. Praise God. He's, he's been there. Now, if someone shows up now and say, hey, I'm Apostle Paul. Ah, now you should doubt that one. Praise God. Yeah, I'm telling you, you should doubt that one. Because now, what does that mean? It means he must have risen from the dead. Now, how did he... How did he escape that? <laughs> Praise God. Without that time, we've not reached that time because they are all held as prisoners by the Spirit of death. Everybody that have died, both uh, no matter how anointed they are, they are all held 
they are all prisoners to the spirit of death. That's the truth about it. And they will be there until victory comes. It is by victory that they will be free. And that's why the Bible speaks about the last trump. That trumpet that will sound is the day victory is going to be declared over the spirit of death. But get what I'm saying. So there is a promise of immortality. That is rest in itself. But how many people can beat their chest to say today that they believe in immortality? How many of how many Christians will beat their chest and say they believe it and they are expecting it? Now, when you speak like that, someone say, So are you trying to say that you will not die? Come on, please go away. What are you talking about? But there is a promise of it. He told us in Timothy, he says, he has brought titles, say he has brought life and immortality to light. Through the gospel, Jesus himself said, I am come that they might have life and have it in abundance. Jesus himself said to Mary, he that believes in me, though he were dead, he will rise again. And he that believes in me and is alive will not see death. Jesus said, he also said, anyone who believes in me will not, you know, you know they, they stoned him because of these things, <laughs> praise God. They were angry. What are you trying to say? But there is a promise. That's what I'm trying to get to you. But we, we don't want to think of that yet. We want to look at the low-hanging fruit, you know, divine healing, even divine health. People, people are beginning to struggle with it. If you have it, praise God. If you don't, no. No, it is not by chance. It is entering into rest. And you must believe first of all and receive that message. Mix it with faith. What do you mean mix it with faith? Now you have heard there is divine health. There is divine healing. Maybe you're sick right now. So you're talking about divine healing. Then you still need to talk about divine health. See, divine healing is to bring you out of this sick situation, right? And then divine health is to get you to that place where you don't fall sick anymore. See that now? Now, you don't fall sick anymore, not because there are no jams and all those things flowing around the, the atmosphere, but because there is a system that you will be or you have been introduced to that cleanses your body. And what is that system? Not, not taking some drugs here and there. I'm talking about the word of God. See that? So now you hear the promise of divine health. How do you mix it with faith? You have read. You have heard what every, every scripture have said about it. But what you need now is, remember, faith comes by hearing. Are you getting me now? Faith comes by hearing. And hearing what? The voice of God. So how do you mix what you have heard with faith? Now you've read all these things. You know, sometimes people say, oh, I, 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 took, I read all the scriptures that have to do with divine health. And I was confessing them and confessing them. Aha, uh -huh. you are confessing them doesn't mean you are releasing faith. You must wait for faith to come. And faith comes when you hear God's word for yourself consigning that thing. You see that? Now, until that word comes, everything you are doing in your confession is hope. Hope will not take you into the rest. My time is up. I'm going to continue from here tomorrow. And I pray for you. Lord, open their understanding right now. And fill us with your thoughts in a mighty way. Cleanse our heart from every unbelief and enrich us with your truth. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. Have a fantastic day. Bye.